Hello, real hi-fi help. I found uh, I've created ten tips for um, giving you a, a much better hi-fi room, so you can get a lot more out of your sound equipment. So uh, all of these tips are basically for free. And uh, let's start up uh, with it at uh, point one, saying um, you should avoid glass, uh, especially glass windows in a room. They have a tendency of psyching up the sound means like it, it it's kind of a it's it, it it's a weird way of boosting the sound while um almost stimulating the um the middle range and the um the treble to a degree that it's a uh, very bright and harsh sounding so uh if you can at all uh, avoid windows, um, you can use drapes, um, cover your windows up, curtains, whatever. Um, I suggest doing that, it can remove a lot of harshness. And general glass furniture, um, cupboards and, and stuff like that. And you, yeah. So uh, point two is uh, avoid, if you can avoid a, a huge distance between the hi-fi gear and the wall, why I'm saying this is that usually the more distance that you have between your speaker and uh, the side walls and the back wall, the more it thins out the sound or has a tendency of thinning out the sound. There are, of course, some few exceptions, but I would definitely go with the setup that is as close as possible to the back and the side walls and also one very important thing is that if you can have internal walls meaning that if you have any firm relatively big structure within the speakers like a, a cupboard or anything like like your tv is on or your sound equipment is on between the speakers it actually can help uh, improve sound quite a bit so uh, you get rid of a lot of middle tone and an upper range uh, harshness from the from the treble it also helps keep a, a firm uh, grip on the uh, on the bass so inside walls outside walls relatively close speaker system uh, what, what's it called <laughs> speakers close to the back wall as close as possible uh, that will usually create a lot better sound let me give you an example I once uh, I actually still have a set of Fender Stain uh, speakers, one CI, and I tried them down in my first room, which was only uh, seventeen square meters. It sounded absolutely uh, amazing, but then when I got a better system, <laughs> and then um, took them up to my room upstairs, which was a lot bigger. It was about almost fifty. Uh, square meters suddenly the sound was just horrible and that's even though I had a system that was a lot better and what I'm trying to say is that there's a certain amount of distance you need from the speakers to the back wall to the side wall and also if you can somehow make an internal wall um, that will isolate the the speaker sounds and keep the pressure plus if you're going from having about four or five meters from the speaker to to the back uh, of the room um, to something that's more like 11 meters, um, it can actually destroy the sound by sucking out the, the bass because there's just too much of a distance. So uh, it's something that you have to work with a lot. And um, number three, having paintings that do not have a, a glass frame. Yeah, generally just having a, a lot of paintings in your uh, in your room uh, like with, with wooden frames uh, or some kind of cheap trash whatever you want uh, just a lot of painting all over the place so you don't have all of these naked walls and almost no furniture in the room that helps a lot and um, it, it creates a course a more natural soft uh, sound with where, where the sound flows more and number four, use a carpet to create a more natural and unpleasant sound. Oh yeah, this makes a big difference. Um, in some few cases, it can actually 
uh, make the sound a bit too boring and round. But I would suggest for most people's setups, um, definitely have a, a carpet. And you can move it around all over the place to find out where it's best suited. And um, small rooms should usually have... Um, yeah, small rooms usually have a, a harder acoustic than the big rooms, so dampening can also do a bit. Um, number six, having a, a side room open up to another room is also uh, normally a, a very bad thing for the sound. So I see this very often when I when I visit friends is that they have this almost perfect room, but it opens up to the side to another room. And, and that's just not good for the for, for the stereo imaging. It, it's enough to make the sound a bit confusing and lose a lot of the pressure. And um, yeah, it just generally sucks a lot of bass and middle rate, uh, middle range uh, uh, warmness out of the sound. So I suggest not doing that. And um, if your spouse allows it, try and put plastic or something behind your listening position. It can many times remove a lot of harshness. Yeah, if you don't have a huge distance from your speaker to the wall behind where you're listening, um, if there's only like four or five meters, something like that, and you have a bare, naked, hard uh, wall, like a, a brick wall or some other hard surface, um, just putting, you know, like the plastic that you put inside of the walls uh, when you're insulating your 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 place. I don't know what, what it's called. Um, in, da in Danish, it's called dampspeer. But um, that can help the sound a lot. Uh, it can take a lot of the harshness away and make it so much more nice to listen to. Uh, it looks like it looks like crap, but um, yeah. If you're allowed to do it, definitely do it. It will only cost like probably ten dollars to cover the whole wall with some some uh, soft plastic. Not talking about the hard stuff, but some kind of soft um, plasticky thing. And um, yeah, and also point eight here is not having a an almost empty room that does a lot for the sound. Uh, true, uh, especially when you can uh, fill up that room using wooden chairs uh, it has a tendency of giving the sound a natural lag and that's what where a lot of audiophiles go wrong is that they put these firm structures up bass traps and all kinds of stuff like that and they have a tendency of removing a lot of harshness yes which is good but they also have a, a tendency of um, creating holes in the f sound frequencies so you're, you're basically solving the problem by suppressing certain frequencies and you don't want to do that. So having a not so necessarily tidy room with a lot of uh, furniture, um, especially wooden chairs and, and, and small structures like that can actually help you uh, a lot with your uh, acoustic. So, um, and also like, like I wrote here, if you have some kind of lazy boy chair, leather chair where you can where you can sit down and you can physically feel the the sound waves through that chair or sofa um i've tried this a couple of times uh visiting friends and also some some stores it makes a huge difference if you have a a um, half big sofa made out of leather and you can just feel those uh, bass vibrations and the middle tone and everything just being sucked into that and then course it gets you know transferred into your body so um, if you have too big a, a sofa it of course uh, removes a lot of the vibration but uh, it's a fun thing to to, to, to think about because it really engages you and so you so you're starting to to really feel the the, the sound so um, and personally what I do is um, this is a very cool tr um, trick here not so much a, a, a room tip, but I, I managed to squeeze it in just so I can have, <coughs> pardon me, so I can have uh, 10 points here. And that's, if you have a double pull on the minus pole on your power cables, it gives you a more natural and comfortable sound. 
so it doesn't sound as thin and rushed. Most people will probably think, is this guy crazy or, or what? But just try it. Go with a, a normal crap cable, and then after that, make your own cable, but put um, twice as much um, copper or whatever you're using on that minus pole. It What it does is that it gives your sound system the chance of uh, charging up and, and releasing the sound in a in a very comfortable um, rich kind of way uh, it's so hard to describe but if you're going from a, a, a very thin minus and a very thin uh, plus and you just beef up that minus a bit uh, it will actually create a the feel as if you're going from an integrated amplifier to a, a monoblock uh, system. So it's it, you're basically transferring more power, creating a more uh, easy, natural, comfortable sound, and there's absolutely no drawbacks. Of course, you should do this with, if you're in doubt and, and how to do it, get a technician to, to, to deal with that for you. Um, what was it now? but it helps a lot with the timing of the sound so especially when you've got transistor equipment point 10 here is that uh, i also recommend having your <clears throat> system on uh, standby which uh, usually opens up the sounds and let it let it uh, flow more because if, you, if you're the type of guy who just turns on the equipment like five minutes before you have to use it has a tendency of sounding a bit more harsh and raw so uh, usually if you can have it on for a couple of hours before you listen to your um, your sound equipment or if you have some kind of built-in standby function just like uh, those Macintosh transistor amplifiers basically they're, they're constantly on, uh, on standby and uh, it helps them uh, open up so people never really turn them completely off uh, generally when they have a Macintosh uh, transistor amplifier so if you have some kind of function like that on your gear please uh, use it it helps you a lot with controlling the uh, the, the harshness and especially in a in a in a small uh, room you really start noticing stuff like that because the acoustic in a small room is very direct and uh, you're getting instant feedback from what your system is doing which is very good or very bad so uh, you want to eliminate all kinds of uh, unnatural uh, harshness so um, um, so like yeah so so like I wrote here I mean comparing uh, for example a, a tube amplifier five minutes after you've started it up to five hours or even a day after you've started it up it's usually three totally different sounds um, so it's worth looking into that if you can somehow simulate that I also want to point out that in my room I have a lot of pillows on the on the on the beds I have a lot of curtains that I can move back and forward um, like for example if I don't want too much uh, harshness coming from one of the windows I can just um, cover that so that's going to help you a hell of a lot and also one thing that I haven't mentioned here is you can actually, if, if your <laughs> partner allows this, you can actually pull up some artificial uh, plastic, um, soft plastic behind, you can, you can create an artificial wall behind your listening position. If you have like five or 10 meters or whatever of, 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 of uh, air behind your listening position, you can gain a hell of a lot by just putting an artificial plastic uh, wall up and it, and it probably won't cost you really anything more like ten dollars or something like that to to create that but definitely go and go and try that it's, it's just a plastic wall that you're that you're basically pulling up you don't even have to make a, a complete plastic wall you, know, you, can, you can just create some kind of structure and then just cover it with some kind of plastic wall behind you and that can sometimes fix a lot of problems a lot of acoustic problems so uh, just an idea it doesn't look good but it sounds really good um, so uh, yeah try that 